Have you ever co considered why you aren't currently sick, coughing, sneezing, and constantly in pain? Well, the answer to these questions are far from simple. Today I will be um, discussing, the, uh, in the questions I have just posed, perhaps I have made the incorrect assumption that you're all currently in perfect health. If I have, my apologies, allergy season sucks. The purpose of my question was to introduce the concept of the immune system, made up of millions of cells which attack pathogens and keep the body healthy and safe. It's important to know that the immune system is made up of more parts than I'm currently capable of understanding, let alone explaining. But I mention it to introduce the concept of diseases that hinder our body's first defense. Today I'll be discussing two similar but different kinds of cancer which attack the immune system, leukemia and lymphoma. These terms are umbrella terms for multiple types of the same kind of cancer. For your sake, as much as my own, I will try and keep it simple. Leukemia is a broad term used to describe cancers of the blood and blood-forming tissue. Bone marrow is home to some really cool cells called stem cells. Stem cells, in a nutshell, are somewhat like baby cells. They ex are alive, but exist for the sole purpose of multiplying and eventually specializing to replace cells across the body, such as blood cells. As the cells begin, begin to specialize, they can become hemat uh, hematopoietic or blood stem cells. Spe then specialize further into either lymphoid or myeloid stem cells. Lymphoid stem cells develop into lymphoblasts, which are kind of like teenage stem cells in the sense that they kind of know what they want, but are still searching for their identity. This, these then develop into lymphocytes, which for our purposes are white blood cells, which fight um, pathogens in similar but slightly different ways. Myeloid stem cells develop into their own kind of uh, teen cells, which are myeloblasts. Myeloblasts develop into myelocytes and granulocytes, white blood cells which fight disease, and red blood cells which carry oxygen and blood platelets across the body for blood clotting. Now, as interesting as it sounds, you probably want to know what it has to do with leukemia. Leukemia is caused by a mutation in the replication of uh, one of these cells, either lymphoid or myeloid. This essentially means that the cell makes a mistake when replicating itself, leading it to multiply uncontrollably, eventually taking over the, um, take, overtaking and replacing the healthy cells in the blood and bone marrow. This leaves patients in a highly vulnerable position. The cancer cells tend to gather in the liver, lymph nodes, spleen, and skin, key points to our immune system. The other type of cancer, which is difficult to diagnose, perhaps in part due to its similarity to leukemia, is lymphoma. Lymphoma is a cancer of the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is a key part to our immune system as it is part of the body's germ-fighting network. Lymphoma is um, caused by a genetic mutation in lymphocytes, the white blood cells I previously mentioned. So, um, the main difference between leukemia and lymphoma is the fact that in uh, lymphoma, the blood cells are capable of forming tumors, while in leukemia, they do not. Um, the way we treat these, as you can probably tell, there is a lot of similarities between leukemia and lymphoma. And our ability to find similarities between them has meant we are able to treat both kinds of cancer. For example, I, today we'll be talking about stem cell transplantation. Remember these? Stem cells are, have many different kinds, but today I will be referring to four. There are those which have the ability to become multiple different kinds of cells, and those which can only become one kind of cell, or unipotent cells. I like to think of these in the metaphor I mentioned before. We have pluripotent or baby cells, which have made no choices about regarding their future yet. Then we have a slightly more specialized uh, cells being multipotent or teen cells, kind of like the blood cells I mentioned before, who have made some kind of choices about what they like and don't like. Next, we would have the high school graduate cells or oligopotent cells, who have made some form of decision regarding their career path. And finally, we have unipotent or university graduate cells, which have specialized to become a single type of thing. Now, obviously, this isn't a hyper-realistic metaphor because one can still change their career path after university, while unipotent cells can only become one kind of thing. Another benefit to unipotent cells is their ability for super-rapid multiplication. So, 
all of this sounds really cool, but what does it have to do with stem cell transplantation? Well, if before patients undergo stem cell transplantation, they must first undergo a process called conditioning, in which all cancerous and non-cancerous cells are killed, leaving patients vulnerable and susceptible to disease. In stem cell transplantation, uh, we have developed the ability to treat these types of cancer, and it is one of the most relevant treatments to this date for hematologic cancers. There are two kinds. One of the main ones is autologous stem cell transplantation, which consists of um, harvesting the own patient's stem cells, blood stem cells, before they undergo conditioning, and then reintroducing them into their system once they have undergone conditioning in a process called engraftment. The kind of blood cells used are the blood stem cells, this, since these have the ability to replicate all the necessary blood cells um, that were killed in the body. Another similar yet slightly different kind of treatment, yet transplant used in leukemia treatment is allogenic stem cell transplantation, which uses um, donor cells. The, donors are, uh, the potential donors are paired with patients using something called the human leukocyte antigen, or HLA. What this means is essentially an, the antigen in charge of uh, differentiating foreign cells to the own patient's genetic material uh, must be similar enough between both people so that the patient will hopefully be able to accept the donor cells. Patients are paired by comparing uh, blood samples of the patient to blood registries and family members to hopefully find an HLA similar enough and pair them. And once this is done, the patient undergoes conditioning and then the donor uh, teen cells are introduced into their system. The donor teen cells are also able to replicate and reform all the necessary blood cells, but also have the ability to find and kill cancerous cells, which is known as graft versus cancer uh, effect. What this Now, of course, all of this sounds as a really great opportunity, but there are also necessary risks to consider, especially in um, allogenic stem cell transplantation, as the genetic material of the cells is not the same to the host at some points, this can mean that the, the body's own cells will fight the foreign cells even up to a year after the transplantation has occurred once the immune system regenerates. This will leave the patient vulnerable and susceptible to disease and is known as graft versus host disease. As notable the risks of this, as notable as the, the risk for this is, I believe that it is important to consider how great of an opportunity this could provide to people to continue their lives and live, live with their um, disease. The main takeaway I want you to have from this today is not necessarily understanding the difference between leukemia and lymphoma or white blood cells or red blood cells or agreeing with me that stem cells are the coolest kind of cell ever. I want you to consider the bigger picture. The ability of intelligent people to work together has allowed us to develop technologies that didn't exist before. I want you to consider why it's important to think about health and the processes that occur in our body when we don't even have to think about it. But also consider the ways in which pe intelligent people have been able to find ways to help people lead better lives. According to the World Health Organization, 20 million people were diagnosed with cancer in 2022. One in five people will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime, ensuring that every one of you in this room will know someone whose whole worldview shifts because of disease. Leukemia and lymphoma are just two kinds of cancer, but they both have multiple subtypes classified under them, and each person has a different genetic code and condition. But what I, the main takeaway I genuinely want you to have is people all have different kinds of knowledge, and our ability to look at what we can do and find a way in which it connects us to the rest of the world has an ability to change the way we view it such as how uh, doctors were able to find the similarities between leukemia and lymphoma and find better ways to treat it, or how stem cell researchers have and continue to find ways to apply the amazing qualities of stem cells. I want you to be able to consider the ways in which you can take what you can do and find an application for it with the rest of the world. Maybe you could be able to help those one in five lead better lives. Thank you.